Hello everyone, this is the setup shot for the location because I am in a secret place that is a former warehouse for antique dealers and there's a lot of old interesting things that have been here for a long time and thanks to a very special friend of mine, I get to go in and take a look. We are allowed to shop. So we're gonna show you some really interesting old things. There's a very chirpy alarm going on, so you'll just have to do like we do and ignore it to the best of your ability. Uh, it's just, it's worth it. Trust me, we're going to take a look. There's, there's one other person with me, and <laughs> I have to, uh, <laughs> and I have to give her thanks and credit because I would not be here if it wasn't for her. Uh, she got us this invitation to this amazing amazing place. So yes, I'm here shopping with Crazy Lamp Lady. You should definitely watch the video on her channel because uh, she got in here one day ahead of me and so she is going to show you some stuff that I didn't even get to see. But wow, look at all of this. This is what an organized old-time dealer's warehouse looks like. I can't say that my warehouse resembles this in terms of organization in any way at all. Well, it resembles this. I'm going to try to be methodical because there's just so much here and I want to try to take it all in with you and then we'll go back uh, or I'll go back and shop and look for particular highlights. Jocelyn is going to take a number of items and actually do a whatnot sale for the family that is starting to liquidate this collection. And so you can check that out as well. But they have so many interesting things and just rows and rows of it. Old kettles in brass and iron and a lot of them. Uh, the big brown ceramics up there are Chinese things. I've seen several Chinese items that are from the dynastic era sitting in here. On the walls, there's all these interesting looking farm implements and a ton of prints and then wall pockets. And then there is everything from enamel stoves to beautiful porcelain and glass, which we'll show you too. The very first thing I went for actually was copper luster because they had so many pieces that were interesting. Copper luster was really big in early Victorian to mid-Victorian England because it was shiny and bright and decorative and it reflected those flickering gas lights in Victorian homes. But when you see decorated pieces, those are a little more interesting. I've already put one up in my pile that is a really neat teapot with a great handle. This guy's really cool with the, looks like a Dalmatian on it, on one side, approaching the flower basket. And is that a sheep on the other side? This would be a really cute piece. It does have a chip though, but copper luster, you know, we're used to seeing a lot of little small dark pieces like this, but copper luster could really be amazing and have some really incredible detail for its time. And here's a neat example here, Victoria and Prince Albert. Look at the price they have on that. That's a very, very cheap old school price, but we're going to pay, we have agreed that we are going to pay the owners a fair price wholesale based on what we think these things would go for now. So we're not going to tell them that we're only going to pay six dollars for this piece, for example. Cruets galore in every sort of pattern you can imagine. Bookends. I've had a lot of people looking for Abraham Lincoln stuff lately, probably because I'm in the middle of the country. These little babies are working awfully hard to push those books up for you. Really cute little pair here. I'm not sure if these are bookends or if they were meant to sit as part of a garniture set. Unfortunately, she's lost her hand with these celluloid applied pieces from the 20s and 30s. You really do have to check condition because sometimes those parts got broken. These are interesting as well. They have the nice brass urn and the figure in them, and there is a pair. And those are so different and so much older than we usually see. I have to say I'm intrigued by them and they might have to go in my pile because I do like bookends but they're a little chipped here. Now when you're looking at Victorian stuff it's a little less likely you're going to find it in perfect shape but that does bother me a little. These are marked Jersey 10 on the back and they have a very nice painted urn. These are going to be from about 1920. Very formal looking would definitely hold some books well. And I think I might like those too. We have a couple of nice Fenton blue pieces. Let's see if we can open this so you can see them better. And an old Paris vase in the middle from the 1870s. This one's a little more unusual because, well, first of all, it's a man sitting with the dog, but look at the pants. Very Beau Brummel, very French fashion of the era. 
Well, apparently these wolfy nudie cards from the 50s were not unique to the United States. But you can tell these are foreign because the face cards have different letters than we're used to. What in the world did you just find? It's a great best friend. They don't say anything that you don't like. That's so amazing. Is that ceramic? Yes. That must weigh a ton. It doesn't actually. I was actually kind of surprised. Really? It doesn't weigh as much as I thought it would. It's so interesting. Is there any artist information? I didn't see anything on the bottom. It's so cool. I mean, I really sort of don't care, but it'd be interesting to know who did something like that. It's stoneware. And yeah. No mark. That's just so interesting and in a very strange modernist way that people love right now. So it's the teeth. The teeth make it. Yes. <laughs> they have a lot of nice Imari and I imagine possibly European plates in here. Yeah, like see this one's Masons and of course so many of the patterns are based on Imari ware from Japan and Chinese designs because that's where all of the porcelain came to England before. But then they started making their own. I did find one piece I find really interesting. This appears to be an armorial bowl, meaning it was done with someone's coats of arms and they would order them and have to have them made and then sent around from China. Now the question on this one is, 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 is it one of the French reproductions of the 1850s by the Edna company? I don't see their mark on it. They were usually very good about marking things so that nobody would be fooled. Unfortunately, these were valuable enough that people started to fake them. And I think this one is a little too shiny, a little too bright, and doesn't seem like it has enough wear. So I'm not even thinking that it's a 19th century fake. I think it's actually a 20th century copy. But it's still interesting to look at. If this was a real coat of arms, we'd know. Neat old tiger tobacco tin. This big lunchbox size is a pretty decent seller, but this one is faded as they often are. It probably sat in a window for a long time. Probably because somebody was just using it to hold things back in the day. This is a Tromner balance scale. I just like balance scales. There's the top. It definitely needs a good cleaning as I'm sure a lot of the things are. I think those stuff here sat here a long time. A little bit as is there. There's so much it's a little hard to know where to start and I don't usually feel that way in places like this but with only so much time and the opportunity to see things that people haven't seen in a long time I just I've got to move through this place. Here's some nice European porcelain including some shapes that maybe are as pressure. This one back here in particular with the swan such a beautiful shape and style. It does not have a Prussian mark, but it certainly is of similar quality in design. Let's see if the teapot has any mark. It's so lightweight, surprisingly so for its age. So I'm not convinced that this is a Prussian piece, but it's sure a beautiful piece. And there is interest in teapots again, even more than the chocolate pots. They also have the cream and sugar and a small teapot. Ooh, I like this one for the size. That's very cute. They feel like good quality, but no clue as to their origin. And I really don't think they're RS Prussia blanks, but they're sure similar. People like these old drugstore bottles, and it's really great if you're suffering from neurasthenia. Maybe that is still a thing that people suffer from now. And along with that are other important things like asthmatic compound. Oh boy, I know a lot of people who could use that if it worked. For a dollar, it'd be worth a try. DeWitt's cod liver oil, magna comp, magnesia compound. Some of these old things can be worth a lot, especially if you get into snake oil stuff before the Pure Food and Drug Act of 1906. These pieces are a little later than that, though. So they're not going to be prime high value, but they still might be interesting to collectors. Boy, and like a lot of dealers, they collected old parts. So if you need a part for something, it's probably in here. There is a good phone in here, though. This is an interesting wall phone, but again, a little bit of damage there. So mainly for parts. Chocolates exposed to heat spoil quickly. That's why you should eat them all in one setting like I do. That's why I can't buy chocolate. Bunch of the old child stoves. Over here we've got coffee grinders. This giant Excelsior device that, I have to be honest, I'm not sure what that does. It looks like it flattens and pounds and grinds something in some way, but I can't really tell. And then the baby stove made into a lamp. That's cute. 
All right, let's look down this aisle. This is an interesting piece. I like the color of the glass, and the holder is certainly something different. I can't say I've ever seen this setup before. I'm not even completely sure that these cups go in this piece, and yet they seem quite at home in it. It's just a strange and interesting thing. I have to admit I like it. I have always wanted to own one of these quilted sets, but there should actually be another shaker to go with the mustard pot and the shaker here. So I'm going to have to leave that. So I haven't owned one yet. These were popular around 1890 or 1900, and they're just very cute. These curtain tiebacks are from the 30s and would definitely glow under a black light, but they don't have all of their hardware. The red vase is something that is a fun modernist piece from the 60s. It's not a big piece, but it's definitely the right era, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my pile. I'm not sure what these are. These are supposed to be in flight. Yes. They have no beak. It's almost like they're supposed to hold liquor. I think they are liquor holders, but wow, that's so complicated for... The little ones make sense. Somehow they're supposed to be incorporated in this. Oh, like that would have sat on that somehow? But how? Wow. It looks so fragile, but it's, it's really nice. neat. Really a lot of work, yeah. And I do agree with you about cordial bottles, because that's how they usually form them, but that's something really different. Yeah, it's missing a giant. Aw, too bad. Shoot. Neat piece, though. Unfortunately, the Royal Vienna teapot has a crack here. What a pretty piece. The transfer wears nice, the color is nice, the applied gold. There's your beehive mark from Austria. Because it says Austria, we know this is after about 1900. Malmu, that's where my great-great-grandfather was from. And he moved back there around the time this plate was made, when Gustav V was the king of Sweden. And this is to memorialize the king's visit to Malmö. Lots of porcelain, lots of bone dishes, lots of very pretty things. And some of them are so elegant when you look at them up close. These are very thin and nice. And how nice to have an entire set as well. They're hand-painted, the molded edges. Poppy's very popular in the early 1900s. It's an Austrian mark that I would have to look up. There were so many companies in Austria at that time. Interesting little Art Deco shape piece next to this Franciscan Coronado here. It's got the USA mark. Beautiful French Limoges sets with the garlands. This pattern you can find and match fairly easily, so this one still sells relatively well. I like the little dessert cups. This is a Haviland mark on here from about 1920. I like chintz. I sold chintz at the show this weekend, so I'm in the mood for more. This is Empire, the Shelton Ivory. They're not as well known for this as Royal Winton, but they were another company that did it. Actually, lots of the English companies did chintz right after the war because it was such a celebration of being able to reintroduce color to China, which had been restricted during the war because of material shortages. Some Fenton here, including most of an apartment size Eper, and I wish we had that other horn. Here's the lava bow where you would hang this up. This is your lid. And this is your basin. A popular decorating idea in the 1960s was to have these on a stub wall or someplace where you couldn't put anything else. Lots of paper ephemera. A few pieces on the surface that I saw that I like. I don't know that I have time to go through all of it, but there are certainly some cool things. And I think I just noticed some Beatles cards here. And these typically sell for 3 or $5 each. But it looks like they were taped in, which is a problem for condition. People want them to be perfect. Yeah, unfortunately, all of those were taped in. What a shame, because they have a giant stack of them, but they all came out of an album. So they're all a little stained around the edges. But, you know, when you're looking through a dealer's old warehouse, you're going to find parts, you're going to find as-is, you're going to find perfect, you're going to find all sorts of cool stuff. Speaking of which, we're going to sneak over and see what Jocelyn's finding. This is her pile so far on the other end of the table. She found some molas that are cool. A great Fenton hobnail piece that will glow like crazy under a black light. These cute little squirrels here, which I think are Dealey ceramics with the names on them. Ooh, an early Barbie. Yeah, she's getting some great stuff, and especially this. You never see the mercury glass steer with these kind of pieces on them. And that's a very valuable piece now. 
And then this little guy here, I didn't recognize, but she said is Rosenthal. And there it is with the signature out of the studio line. This is a fairly early studio line piece. And very cute and very modernist. I didn't see any ink wells that I need. Here is Lamp and Chimney Land. Ooh, a whole lot. MIAs, this is Vietnam era stuff. Only Hanoi knows. Very sad. I remember this all in my childhood being on people's cars. I think I will take the MIA button. Ooh, the Folies Vergere. This will likely have elegant women in states of not so much dress. It's not in good shape, unfortunately. It's from the 1950s, as you can see by the airplane. There's one of the galleries. Quite an amazing and world-famous show of dancers and performers, but yes, there was toplessness as well. Most of the wall pockets I see here are 20th century ceramics out of Asia. But they're interesting, like the carp going up the wall. The crabs are cool. Crawdad with the big eyes there. This little Japanese cabinet with all of the different veneer, but it's so delicate and intricate. These are really neat little pieces. Uh, it lost some knobs, and so somebody used screws and was using this as a parts cabinet, but hopefully it'll get rescued. If I had the right knobs, I would take that and fix it up. I need a stopper. It looks like we have all the stoppers you could possibly need. I'm tempted to buy this one and put it aside in case a Blanco piece that fits this comes along, but the tip is broken. A wonder horse. There's a guy in Kentucky who has seven of these running through his yard. It's really, really funny. It's like the Kentucky Derby in childhood plastic. If you really want to find out about old antiques, wow, here is the old antiques journal, and these are bound together. And these are the ones printed back in the 1920s and 30s. So just for fun, let's take one out and see what people thought was interesting to collect in antiques in the depths of the Depression, 1933. Let's try this one. So let's see what they were talking about then, because so much of what we collect now was brand new and just being made then. Here we have Courier and Ives prints, which started to be very collectible, that had been done in the 1860s and 70s, and collectors started to be interested in those. A bluegrass silver service. Weather vanes. Look at these amazing weather vanes. We see reproductions now. We don't see this original stuff. Look how complicated the designs are. Most of this stuff is in museums at this point. But then embroideries from Bulgaria. So, you know, these old books, old reference books, I can't say enough about them. Yeah, the prices may be different, certainly since 1933. But look how much great information is in here that people really don't know anymore. They have this very nice set of Rockingham available at Shreve. Shreve actually had their own ceramics made, but they also had an antiques department. That was true of a lot of the high-end department stores. Frederick and Nelson's in Seattle had an antiques department and a coin department on the upper floors of their department store, even as they were selling new stuff everywhere else. Of course, all these little parts cabinets are pretty collectible now. The thing is, is that these are mostly full of their original contents. And these have to do with watchmaking, and so there is real value if there's anything left in there, because some of these old parts, and especially main springs and things, are not being manufactured anymore. So this would be a very valuable set for a watchmaker. And because it's got the watch parts in, it really needs to go to a watchmaker and not someone who just wants to use the drawers. So I think that lets me out. A lot of things that came over from China about 20 or 30 years ago, when China really first started opening up, a lot of this sort of thing was exported to the United States. Most of it is late dynastic or early 20th century, and there's some really neat pieces. And at the time, China was really just looking for Western money, and so a lot of this came over very inexpensively. Now it's a lot more expensive to ship, and the Chinese are more interested in their historical artifacts, so much less likely to find this quantity of imported stuff. Let's take a look at this jug just because it's so oddly glazed. It looks like something that somebody just made in a backyard kiln, but they did try to put a little design on the top. 
This piece here was likely done by the Rainbow Glass Company before they were part of Viking. They would buy pieces from Blanco and other companies and they would decorate them often with cranberry flash and then resell them as Rainbow Glass. Then Viking took it over and turned it into their company that made the blown glass versions of all of their colors. So the early pieces look really different. This is from the late 40s. These tall mugs with the low handles are indeed Blanco glass. And they do have a few bubbles in them. Oftentimes they do. This is about 1950 when they were making these. You don't see the tall handled pieces at all anymore. They used to sell for really big money. Nowadays I think not as many people are buying the drinkware. But these are pretty good. And I think they have to go in my pile. They really only sell in about the $20 each range. But I just think they're interesting. And I think I'm going to take... This one has a big wave in the glass. They all have bubbles and imperfections. I think I'm going to take two of them. More copper luster. Of course, they were buying back in the day when this was really popular to collect. And like a lot of dealers, you just buy the same thing that you like and your customers like over and over. The piece I think is interesting is down here on the bottom because of this texturing. Old medical books can definitely be interesting this is modern materia medica and therapeutics i think that's been updated a whole lot of times diseases of the skin now what i like to look for in these is whether there's any plates because they'll show us probably horrible things but in great color and graphics oh yes i have warts on the bottom of my feet oh my that looks like a skin problem. Oof, these are grisly. But that is part of the collectability because the oddities, people like them. Doctors who collect like them. Medical people who are looking at old ideas of cures. Especially as certain things prop up, you know, sometimes they go back to the old books and look at, oh, this disease hasn't been around for a while. What were people saying about it back when it was a more prevalent thing? So they're useful to a lot of people, but it is mainly about the graphics. Interesting set of low swivel stools from the early 1970s. I'd like to find a few old carriage blankets that were nice. These coach purses are not really anything, believe it or not. But let's see what this looks like. Looks like an old patterned blanket. This is one of these things that probably was here as a shipping blanket, and now it's collectible. Time marches on. This is an old carriage blanket of wool. Sometimes they have beautiful roses and nice designs. This one seems pretty plain and basic. It's a very stiff mohair. So not terribly comfortable to use, more for the look. And since this doesn't have a graphic, it's not going to be a super interesting one to look at for a collector. So I think I'll leave it. Oh, the for sure price circus with all its pieces. Isn't that cute? That's nostalgia from my generation. I always like a good open sign to put in front of my booth, and this one's certainly priced cheaply enough. Open and closed, so I think we'll take that to the next show. And then there's this. This is the Wild Poppy by Metlock's Poppy Trail. This is one pattern that still sells well because it's fun and it's bright and it's 70s and it's vivid and those poppies just really kick. So we're going to take a look at these. As much as I hate to break up the set, and there are people who will buy all of these pieces, but I have so much dinnerware right now. I'm just going to be good and stick to the serving pieces. The completer pieces. This is how Metlocks made their business as well. They would sell you this set for a low price and barely make any money. And then you paid extra for the pieces that made the set complete. And so they are scarcer. So yes, we'll take the butter dish and probably a gravy boat. From EK Company. Well, that's Eastman Kodak. And I like camera stuff. So we're going to see what's in this box. Ah, it is the film projector and splicer for the Kodoscope Junior. This is 1930s. This is a collectible piece, but they really are looking for the larger ones of these. So I think I'm going to pass on this just because I am coming back from a show and I do have a lot of things in the car. And then there's all this. Who knows what's in these boxes? The people who are responsible for clearing out this place are not sure what's in these boxes either. We'll have to see if maybe they'll have us back again. Wow, look at these blanket chests. It looks like a lot of Swedish and Scandinavian. These are beautiful old pieces. Look at all the painting and detail and metalwork on this one. And they just have stacks of them. These were very popular to bring over from Europe in the 1970s and 80s to sell. 
This is just a simple little piece, but this is elm wood and it's Chinese with the old porcelain knobs. This is going to date sometime around 1900, late dynastic period. Very cute little piece. I like small pieces of furniture. I like this. It's been painted white, but it is a neat old Victorian piece with the spindles. And little shelves are always handy and useful, so that might have to go with me. We took opposite sides of the store, and she shopped one side, and now I'm shopping the other side. And it's interesting how we're both finding things that the other one passed by. Everybody has a different eye. And even though we sell similar things, we also have different clientele. These ruby dolphin candlesticks. Dolphin bases were very popular starting in the early 1820s with the sandwich company one of the first things they made but this is 20th century probably 1960s there's a pair in there red and i like them wow you're right lids are us i'm like oh i'm determined to find this i'm like trying out every single lid yeah something will come up yeah, something will fit it'll be married but it'll work decoys lots of decoys these are all the rubber ones from the Oh, I don't know, 1950s, 60s vintage, including the big goose. Oh, yeah, cheese dome. Oh, I bet that would be neat if you could find the bottom. This is a neat canopy bed. Oh, here's some more molas. This one has the lizard. Yeah, you were not lying. Oh, I like that. Well, she got one and she said she would leave one for me. So I'm going to take one too. I think they're great. Chinese Elmwood, Chinese doors. We saw a lot of warehouses like this in Washington State because a lot of this was imported through there. And it's interesting after, you know, this was all a phenomenon like 25 years ago, this stuff coming over. So to see a bunch of it again in one place is interesting because most of this got sold and distributed back then. Isn't this sweet home, sweet home? And they're all getting along so nicely. That looks like something from about 1920. You can tell the arts and crafts because, yes, her hair and her dress, but look at the colors. Look how similar they are to 1970s colors. Color trends do repeat themselves. Boy, I could really use some radios. I don't know if any of these work or if there's any way to test them, but this one here, the Majestic, I like because I think I could clean up that cabinet. It's got a nice 1940s look. Sometimes the cords go brittle on these. We'll take a look. And unfortunately, indeed, this one does need to be rewired. So I guess we're going to leave that. These darling children's prints from the 1930s were by Freddie Langdon. And I love the way they have them all framed together. Playing in the snow, taking a Christmas tree home, sitting before the fire. It's like the Four Seasons. These are wonderful carved lions. These would have originally supported a top on a hutch or a sideboard of some sort and they are just really incredibly well carved from the 1890s and then there's trunks and more trunks this place is just so much look at this amazing Carrollton stove this is so cool it's shaped like an answered roof house from the 1870s when that style was really popular and it was so popular it even made its way to America. There's a wonderful old mansard roof house in Kentucky out in the country that we drive by that looks a lot like this. This was made by Bibb & Son in Baltimore, Maryland, and it has an 1872 date on it. And it is just really interesting. I'm tended by the pole lamp, but it is so long, it might be hard to get in the van the way I have it loaded. And look at all of these boxes. These are Chinese, and these were embellished when they were sent over. And then they've got more china. They have so many beautiful pieces of old china. The kinds of things that people collected and showed in racks on walls. And they're still beautiful. And it's still a great way to decorate a wall. You don't have to use pictures and prints. This is a very nice set. Priced at $125. It's Mason's Ironstone. And this is a 20th century piece. But it's nice to see the bowl and the pitcher together. Then next to it is a trivet base for a very specific piece that's gone. But this is black transfer wear, and this has an English registry mark. So this is going to be sometime in the second half of the 19th century. And then I think this is a Mason's terrine as well. These used to sell for really big money. I used to get $350 or $400 for these. I think they still sell for a few hundred dollars. And there it is, the Vista pattern. We usually see this in red. But they did do Vista in brown as well, and it was widely distributed in the United States. So this is a pattern you're going to find when you're out there. Boy, so many amazing things. I think these are condensed milk cans. We'll see if they have a hole in the bottom. 
Oh yes, so you'd put your can of condensed milk in and then serve it on the table. This was made in Bavaria and hand-painted. These were popular around 1920, and there are two of them. And I like these because they're an interesting thing to collect. This one's more of a lusterware, also hand-painted. Not quite as well-painted, I would say, as the other one. So of the two, I think this one's the one to get. This piece is signed Watra. It looks like a smaller studio. It's not as precise as some of the mid-century stuff, and so I probably won't get it, but I do think it's an interesting shape. Halloween is near. We have rows of silver plate and torches and tools. I mean, this place just goes on and on. Obviously, they had a warehouse, so they just kept buying. These are pretty neat. These are the green swirled enamel. And boy, they got a lot of these all at once. Let's see if these are actually old. But they are chipped up like they should be. But they're lightweight and they're not. So reproduction. Judge by the weight. This should be heavier than it is. I picked it up and it weighs well under a pound. And an older piece certainly would weigh more than that because of the weight of the metal. Okay, one quick pass one more time by Jocelyn's table. There were two of the Murano bowls, so we shared. And actually, it's fun. You don't know until you shop with someone whether you can shop compassionately or competitively. And she and I actually shopped very well together. We both were like, do you want this? No, you should have it. And so I always enjoy that because it means everybody eventually gets just what they're supposed to. Ooh, and look at that pretty wave crest box. I didn't see this when she put it up. It's got the wave crest mark on the bottom. They typically don't. You have to just look for these small flowers and the coloration on the glass to tell. Well, this has just been so much fun to get to see a place that's not been opened up for a really long time, to get to see a lot of really fun vintage and true antiques that we haven't seen in a really long time, and to get to shop through here. I am so grateful to Jocelyn, the crazy lamp lady, for getting me involved with this invitation. It was really kind of her to share her pick. Very kind of our hosts. Many thanks to them as well. You know who you are and we really appreciate it. So for now, I am on the road and... If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.